Hey guys, how are you? Jim Prusak, physiotherapist here at The Pain PT. And today we're going to go over Dr. Sarno's 12 daily reminders from his best-selling book, The Mind-Body Prescription. And Dr. Sarno, I call him the godfather. He was the one who really set off this whole mind-body healing approach. And I come back to his 12 daily reminders and three do's and don'ts all the time for myself and also for patients. I feel like it's the foundation for healing. And the work that I do with people is built off of these things. Okay, so I think it's really important for us to go over them again and to see how many of these 12 things you're doing each day for your own healing. So I'm gonna pull them up here and go over these with you guys today. And we'll talk a little bit about each one. So the first of the 12 reminders was the pain that you're having or the symptoms you're having are due to TMS, not a structural abnormality. So if you're having any question about this, or you're not sure if this is the case, then you can go and be checked out by a TMS physician. Okay, you can reach out to me, I'm a licensed healthcare provider. I can go through your history and make that diagnosis or determination, or if I have any questions, I can refer you on to a doctor who can make the medical diagnosis for you guys. So we were trying to first rule in TMS and rule out any physical pathology. Okay, so once we've ruled in TMS and you guys, it makes sense to you guys, then we have to start practicing these things that the next 11 things here on the list. Okay, so the second one is that the direct reason for your pain or your symptom is mild oxygen deprivation. Now, some people have said that it's that's not exactly the cause anymore and it might be true, but what we do know is mild oxygen deprivation is one sign of a sympathetic nervous system response. So Dr. Sarna was probably talking about that, which comes from your autonomic nervous system, which comes from your limbic brain, your hypothalamus. So he was correct. It's just one of the things that can happen when we're in a fight or flight stressed state or the brain's in a stressed state. Okay. So that leads to number three then is that TMS is a harmless condition caused by my repressed emotions. Now, again, Dr. Sarno was right. From what I'm reading in the research is this limbic brain and amygdala that are at the center or at the hub of creating, causing, predicting, and contributing to chronic pain. It's the emotional center of the brain that's involved in chronic pain, not the sensory or what we call nociceptive centers of the brain. We know from some very, very good science that the brain centers shift from pure sensory nociception in acute pain to the emotional centers of the brain in chronic pain. Okay. And since this condition is coming from your brain, it's harmless. It's a signaling problem. It's not a physiological or structural problem in your body. So I really want you guys to understand this. It's harmless. It's benign. Okay. That's so important because it means there's not a problem. And I've said this before in a couple of my other videos. You can't see this thing as a problem because then it completely changes how you look at it and how you act every day and what you tell yourself and what you believe. Okay, so this is harmless. This is benign. And the rest of his 12 daily reminders are gonna feed off this idea that this is harmless. Okay, now he says in number four that the principal emotion is repressed anger. But as we know, it could also be fear, it could be sadness, it could be guilt, other emotions. Again, the three main categories of emotions, negative emotions that we know can contribute to somatic symptoms in the body are the anger, frustration category, the fear, anxiety category, and the sadness, uh, sort of grief category. All three of those have been shown in scientific studies to produce somatic symptoms in the body, okay? Dr. Sarna believed that repressed anger, which can be very much be true in a lot of people, but I also see very much fear is creating a lot of symptoms in people and sometimes unprocessed grief as well, if somebody's passed away or if you've had a lot of loss. Now, number five says that TMS exists only to distract my attention from the emotions, okay? So 
in a sense, he's saying that we're getting these physical symptoms as a distraction from our emotions. So that is one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is that the emotions actually cause physical symptoms in the body, not emotional symptoms. Now, that's called alexithymia. We spoke about that. This is very common with um, chronic type pain. It happens when people suppress emotions, too. We know from clearly in the research is that suppressed, repressed emotions will cause phys physical symptoms. We also know that amygdala, which is the center of emotion, also creates physical pain in the body. It doesn't just create emotional pain. Okay. But because this is the emotional center of the brain, where the cause of this is, cause of TMS, we need to put our energy there, as you're going to hear about in the rest of these 12 daily reminders. Okay, so number six, since whatever body part it is, is basically normal, or since you're, whatever issue you're dealing with is basically normal, there's nothing to fear. Okay, so he's addressing the first emotion, which I believe is the most pronounced one to start with, which is fear slash anxiety, okay? We have to get over fear to heal. And so he goes right into number seven, which I'll talk about in a second. He says, therefore, since there's nothing to fear, physical activity is not dangerous, okay? So what he's talking about here, number six and seven, is called fear avoidance. There's been a ton of research. You know I've talked about it. 100 years of fear conditioning research that's been put out there that has shown that the way you break fear is not by avoiding things, not by focusing on the fear, but by getting into doing things again, okay, to getting into actions, um, behaviors, getting back to exercise, doing all the stuff. That's how you kill off fear, and that's how you're going to kill off TMS, okay? So that's how we break this fear avoidance cycle, which is so prevalent in chronic pain. Physical activity is not dangerous, which leads to number eight. And I must resume all normal physical activity. Now, Dr. Sono says in the book, and many of you might not remember this, he says, and I'm going to go down there and read his quote that he says exactly about this, because I think it's really important from the physical aspect. He says, perhaps the most important but most difficult thing that patients must do is resume all physical activity, including the most vigorous. He goes on to say, I now believe that physical restrictions imposed by TMS are much more important than the symptoms, thus making it an imperative that the patient gradually overcome them. If patients cannot do this, they are doomed to have recurrences of their symptoms. So, He's really talking very strongly about the power of getting back to doing everything again. And I believe this is true as well, because as I tell people, your actions speak louder than your words. So if you're just telling your brain that, hey, this is TMS and I'm safe and I'm okay, and you're sitting on your sofa and you're not going back to your normal activities, well, the brain is not going to believe you're okay and out of danger because you're not actually doing the very things that it's making you scared of. Okay, remember, TMS, if you have the diagnosis, is a harmless, benign condition. It's so important to remember because when you're starting up physical activity and your pain's rising up, you're going to forget about that. You're going to say, it's really harmful. It's really bad. I can't do this. No way. The pain's going to put me back. Now, this must resume off normal physical activity. Number eight, he says in nine, I will not be concerned or intimidated by the physical symptoms. So what he's saying, and he says this in just the right order, is that as you get back to normal activity, you might be hit with a bunch of physical symptoms because you're challenging the brain now. You're saying by your actions, well, this is not dangerous, brain. I can do this. And your brain's saying, uh-uh, I don't think so, man. You better, I'm going to put you back on the couch with some more symptoms. So you can't be concerned or intimidated by the physical symptoms that's being produced. Now remember, the symptoms are being produced by your brain, not your body. That's why it's not dangerous. Chronic pain is not acute pain. There's no damage in the body. So that's why we can keep going with physical activity. Now, again, this speaks to fear avoidance. And very good research that's come out over 100 years is that, look, they're saying it's that you're going to get more symptoms. So they're already telling you that, to be ready for that. They're not telling you to stop. Even the research is not saying, well, if you get symptoms, you better stop. No. 
This is not an acute problem. I've been a physiotherapist for over 20 years. I can tell you the difference. This is not an ACL tear. This is not a fracture where you have to take it slowly and we have to gradually get you back. Now, most people do need to go gradually because of only one reason. They can't handle the pain. Okay, that's the mental strength. They can't handle the symptoms. But that's part of your process of getting better. Okay, and the way we start to handle them is the next things he talks about in number 10, which is I will shift my attention from the physical symptoms to the emotional issues. Really, really important. Okay, you don't want to focus on the symptoms. I've been saying that for a while now because what happens is you link up your brain now to the symptoms and it gets bigger. Okay, so you don't want to focus on the symptoms because what it's going to do, it's going to kick off a bunch of negative stuff. Okay, there's, there's an association now, especially if you've had your chronic symptoms for a long time, there's going to be a negative association with that connection. Okay, so we're moving from the physical symptoms to the emotional issues. I talked recently about affect labeling as one way to get in touch with your emotions. Very simply, how does the symptoms make you feel emotionally? Start there. Then look at things in your life that are stressing you out, either when your symptoms started or currently, that create emotions in you and see if you can connect with the emotions and what they are, journal about them, label them in your mind, talk about them. Okay, so we're not moving to the physical symptoms, we're moving to the emotions. Now it's number 10. Now, number 11, back to this strength again. I tend to be in control, not my subconscious mind. Very important, okay? This is what's going to allow you to get back to physical activities. You are in control. I've talked about this before. This is your prefrontal cortex. All this stuff blows me away because it makes perfect sense from the science now what Dr. Sarno said. He was a genius. So your conscious mind needs to be in control, prefrontal cortex. Not your subconscious mind, which is the limbic brain, the amygdala. So this is where you're getting stronger and saying, no brain, I'm not going to let you stop me. I'm going to go do X, Y, Z. I'm going to get on my life. There's nothing wrong with me. And you have to hold to that. This is your boundary. This is your wall that you hold to it so you don't get bowled over by the amygdala and weakened, pushed back into fear, which leads to avoidance. Fear also leads to catastrophizing and worrying. So we're not going to get pushed back anymore. Because again, why? It's a harmless condition. It's a benign condition. There's nothing wrong physically. Okay, so we come back to the core of it. And this is what allows you to move forward from this, this idea that it's coming from your brain, not from your body. And the last thing he says, number 12, is that I must think psychological at all times, not physical. And this is really important. So the way you're thinking psychological is I mentioned the two things, dealing with emotions and talking to your brain. Dealing with emotions, labeling your emotions, feeling them, and telling your brain, look, brain, there's nothing wrong here. This is just a harmless condition from my mind. It's caused by stress. And maybe there's some conditioning pattern here. So you're looking out for day-to-day -day stresses in your life that could cause an uptick in symptoms. Okay, what was going on? What emotions were you feeling? Okay, you're gonna be thinking way more psychological than physical. Don't worry about the physical again, because again, that's just the final output from the brain. It's a dead end street. You're at the end of the line here. There's nothing you can do by focusing on the physical except make it worse. So I really hope that's helpful, guys. I find it really, really helpful for you guys to connect back to these 12 daily reminders, as well as this three do's and don'ts. They're basically the same thing, okay? And just a couple last things that Dr. Sarno talked about around these things is that, look, he says, like I was just saying, when you're talking to your brain, he says, the conscious mind addresses the unconscious. The more forcefully, the better, okay? This is what, that was right straight from Dr. Sarno's mouth. So he's saying, we've got to talk with conviction, and that is the same thing as getting that prefrontal cortex stronger so it can communicate to this amygdala and limbic brain to settle down. Okay, so he understood this. You can't just be, oh, please stop. Not going to work. It's not a strong enough uh, message. Okay. And he goes on to say here, he says, we must say to ourselves, it's all right to be the way we are, illogical, 
unconsciously enraged like a child having a temper tantrum. That's part of being human and it is universal. To con we need to consciously think about the repressed rage or anger or other emotions and the reasons for, what, for it whenever we are in pain. So that's what I'm saying, that you want to connect with your emotions whenever you're in pain to think about what's going on. Okay, you want to actually focus on them instead of moving away from them. Remember, those physical symptoms are distractions, as Dr. Sandra said, from the emotions. Or what we're finding in the research is they're actually emotions, but they're coming out physically in your body. Okay. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Use this as a blueprint. Come back to this video as much as you need. Come back to the 12 daily reminders. You can Google them. They're out there on the web. Maybe print them out. See if you're living by each of them every day. See which ones of them you're not doing and see if you can get started. Now, if you're having a difficult time, this is where a coach comes in. This is my job or any pain coach to help you guys work these things okay, to get better. So reach out if you need help, support. If you're stuck, you can't move forward or find another pain coach to help you guys out. And because we can all get better. You guys can get better from this stuff. If it's TMS, you can 100% get better. No doubt. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.